Welcome to the Better Business, Better Life show. I'm your podcast host, Deborah Chantry-Taylor. In this podcast, I interview business owners, EOS implementers, and business experts who share with you their experiences, tips, and tools to help you create not only a better business, but also a better life. At the end of each show, you will have three tips or tools that our guests share that you can implement immediately into your life. If you want more information or want to get in contact, you can visit my website, debra.coach. That's D-E-B-R-A dot coach. Please enjoy the show. And today I am joined by the delightful Aaron Perkipal, who is actually from South Dakota over in the US, and he is a certified EOS implementer, so one of my, my colleagues in the EOS family. Hey, welcome to the show, Aaron. Lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm really, I'm really thankful for the privilege to be here. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to having a chat to you. We always have a brief chat before we get on these calls, and I've heard a little bit about your story, and it's fascinating. So, um, yeah, tell us a bit about your 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 journey, how you got to be where you are today. Well, I went to university, played college basketball at, at my university, and got a degree in accounting. And when I graduated and started working for a public accounting firm, it was a global firm. I, it became pretty clear within the first year as an associate at the at the firm that public accounting was not going to be my life's work. And I can tell you that because I went into, at the end of my, my first busy season, my first year, I went into the managing partner's office and like half of my start class had decided to move on, which is typical in public accounting. Wow. But I went in and talked to him and I said, hey, is there any way we can clarify our core values and our and our mission and vision? Because I, th I think that people are leaving because they don't understand how they fit in the purpose and what we're trying to accomplish in the firm. He was very kind to me, very nice. And he said, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And then he retired six weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that okay. just started a journey over time of like looking for ways that people could that I could help people find purpose in what they do and help people grow. I spent time um, as a pastor for three and a half years in some churches in upstate New York. I went to grad school. I went back and served my the church that I grew up in in a finance capacity and ultimately made my, our way back to Nebraska where I'd gone to college and um, spent time teaching um, accounting and finance and coaching basketball at the collegiate level. And it was during this time that I joined a fitness community. It was a CrossFit affiliate in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And fell in love with the methodology, fell in love with the community. And I had all these summer hours that I wasn't teaching. I didn't have to teach summer classes. And so I started to volunteer at the gym to help the owners. There were three owners at the time, help them around the gym. So I painted the walls and helped them build cabinets in the restroom so they could have some additional storage and things like this. But they still needed more. You know, I could see that there was one owner that was working full time at the gym and he was spending 70 or 80 hours a week there. He was also a competitive CrossFit athlete. There were uh, the other two owners had full-time jobs and families outside of the gym. And so their meetings were sporadic and um, not always effective. There was limited or inconsistent accountability with uh, the coaches at the gym. And so it was just kind of scattered. And Around this time, my wife was working uh, with one of her colleagues and they started to chat about what their husbands did and what they were interested in. And so they said, our husbands have to get coffee together. And so I met this lady's husband for coffee. I'd never met him before. And we sat down and I started to you know, tell him about some of the things I was doing at the gym and I was teaching business classes and I had always had, always had an entrepreneurial type of approach to life and mindset. And he's like, have you ever read the book Traction? said, no, what is that? He's like, oh, you've, you've got a retraction. So I ordered the book. It was holiday break over Christmas. And I read it in three days. And I was, I was thought there's no, I can't believe that I hadn't somehow through my business training, through my master's program and my undergraduate business degree, how have I not ever heard of this operating system that has simple tools that were easy to understand but just in my mind, I could conceptualize and understand how impactful this would be. And mm -hmm. also feeding a little bit off of what my friend Sam, who had told me about Traction, what he explained had happened in his business when he implemented it. Okay. So I met with a couple other... What's that? What had happened in his business when he implemented it? That, so he had, EOS had allowed them 
allowed him to transition his dad out of the business. And then they had just grown by leaps and bounds and on revenue, profit, the scale of their business, what from number of employees, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I was like, this, this sounds phenomenal. So I met with a couple of the implementers in my area at the time to ask them, what does this look like? What does that sound like? And one of the implementers gave me the advice. He said, you should implement, offer to implement for a business that you care deeply about for free. So I joined Basecamp and I started to learn more about implementing EOS in a small business. And I pitched it to the owners of the gym that I'd been helping along the way, painting and all these different things. Mm -hmm. And so they agreed. They said, yeah, let's do it. Let's give it a shot. And over the course of the first probably six to nine months, it was great because it helped us clarify our core values. What type of people did we want in our, in the gym, in our community, both as employees and even to some extent, the, the types of members that we wanted. It gave us clarity about who we wanted to serve and how we wanted to have a deep impact on them, how we could best have a deep impact on them. Mm-hmm. And then it also gave the owners clarity that th- certain things couldn't continue the way they always would in order for, the gr- for growth to happen individually, for growth of the business to happen. And so after about seven or eight months, um, the owner who was working full time in the business pitched to his partners and said, listen, I, I can't keep working at this rate. There's things that I would like to do. You know, my, I'm newly married. I'd like to be able to spend time with my wife. We're trying to have kids. I'd love to be able to be available for my children. So they agreed to part ways. And um, so they went through that process. That took about three more months. And then the owner um, who had been working full time in that business began to hire staff to replace some of the roles that the other two owners had filled. Mm-hmm. And that was a that was difficult in in some regards because most of the time when folks have started a fitness facility, they deeply care about the community. It's a, a deep part of their own identity. Um, and so it's very difficult to, to try to peel some of those pieces apart. Um, so we we worked through those bumps and those types of things. I joined the staff full time. Um, we brought on a, a couple others that were full time to start filling in roles. The accountability chart in EOS was super powerful for us to know what do we actually need to fill. Yeah. What roles are we best at? You know, if you think about strategic coach and Dan Sullivan's unique ability, we got really clear on what we were we loved to do and we were best at. Right. And we began to um, just work methodically through the EOS process, clarifying core values, reestablishing and reclarifying our core focus, having our long-term target, getting really clear on what we could best um, offer to our folks. We invited some members that weren't core values fit or culture fit to our community to find other places to work out, which was a really (laughs) bumpy time as well. Fast forward another four months. So If you think about it, I think we started operating in 2018 on EOS. And then by February of 2019, the ownership had had finalized and formalized their separation from each other. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to July of 2019, and we went through a membership upheaval and probably lost about 20% of our membership because of that decision that we made. And then we're only five months out. Turns out five, six, seven months later, 2020 happens. And we all know that the world turned upside down. And so (laughs) EOS, we have our weekly level 10. And then we just added in a weekly uh, level 10A or level 10.1. You know, we just had a a short because things were changing and moving so quickly. So quickly, yeah. A one one meeting a week wasn't going to do it. So we'd have our, I think we had our level 10 on Monday or Tuesday and then on Friday, we'd do a quick call together for 30 minutes and say, okay, what's the new standard? What are, what are the things that we need to make sure we're doing? I remember having our quarterly right after COVID um, kind of landed in Nebraska. Yep. And we all made predictions. There were five or six folks on the leadership team, and we all made predictions. And I am a pragmatist. And I think I said, you know, there's a 60% chance or 70% chance that the gym won't be open at the end of this because there was no end in sight. It was so new. We didn't know what was going to happen. And, you know, we could, hindsight's great because we can see how many businesses didn't survive 
through the pandemic. Um, but I truly believe that EOS is what allowed us to weather that, to pivot, and to even stay in our core focus. But our core focus was broad enough that it allowed us to pivot in healthy ways and narrow enough that we weren't just all of a sudden trying to be everything to everybody. Okay. Um, and so if I look back, we started in 2018. Between 2018 and 2021, when I finally left the gym, we had increased revenue 30% year over year in the first two years. Mm -hmm. We had a really solid coaching staff. We had a really phenomenal culture and community, people that cared about each other and were excited to spend time together. We didn't have as large of a coaching staff because our, our numbers had gotten to a place from a membership perspective that allowed us to, to impact at a deeper level our members, which was ultimately the goal. We didn't want to be a big box brand where we want you to pay, uh, you know, an insignificant amount per month so that you forget about it. And, yeah. and we yeah. don't really want you to show up. We, <laughs> yeah, we really want, wanted our members to show up. Yeah. And that that's why I loved being a part of that, because my entire life had been looking for ways to make deep impacts on people, whether that was in church or at the at the university I taught at or coaching athletes and things like that. And that's where it really springboarded me to say, hey, this really works. And I began to look for opportunities to implement outside of the gym and make a transition to being a full time EOS implementer. Excellent. So the gym is still going strong. Everything's pretty good there. Yeah. Yeah. When I left in August of 21, we had a director, we, they installed a new director of operations and integrator and they're doing phenomenal. They're, yeah, I, I still follow them. I'm still, uh, I still reach out to some of the, the coaching staff and folks that I got to work with and they're just doing phenomenal things in the lives of the community. Oh, that is fantastic. Hey, I want to go back a couple of steps because you said something yeah. really interesting that I'd like to de dive, dive a little bit deeper into. So you talked about the fact that you, you know, once you had got really clear around your core values and your core focus, that you actually then chose um, to ask some people who didn't have your core values as clients, as customers, um, to, yeah. go and, to go and to go and do their fitness stuff elsewhere. Now, I sure. know for a lot of businesses, they get really nervous about that because they kind of go, but if we let these people go, we don't have the revenue, what's going to happen? Um, I know what happens in that situation, but I'd love to hear what happens, what happened there with the gym because, yeah. So we had the same fears that yeah. everybody would do. Um, you know, we had, we had decided that we wanted to move from a gym where you could come at any time and we wanted to have greater control over the times that we were open. Right. Because... In order to have full-time staff in a gym setting and that staff doesn't burn out, yep. you you need to make sure that you have downtime where they can, you know, have their self, you know, take care of themselves and exercise or move where they can, you know, be at home with their families or pursue other passions that they have outside of the gym. And we had grown this facility to a pretty significant size, especially in our area. We were the largest CrossFit affiliate in the, in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and the way our gym was laid out, we had some rooms that were kind of cordoned off. You could get to them, but it wasn't like you could just see through the whole facility. And so people would tuck into different parts of this. And it was like the main room had a different culture from the front room and a different culture from the back room. And then the second back room, like you had all these different cultures simultaneously in the gym. And what was most important to us was the depth of impact. Right. And so we decided we're going to shut down the back two rooms of, of the gym and just try to get everybody to where they could see each other face to face because that's where the community, the depth of community really happened, the depth of impact. Mm -hmm. And then the second piece that we wanted to focus on was being really great at coaching our members. And so there was the, most of the folks that, op, that worked out in the back rooms were, they were competitive athletes and they, they enjoyed being there and they'd be there three or four hours a day and they were super fit, yep. uh, but they didn't need the coaching that we offered or they didn't want the coaching that we offered. And so from a, from a core focus perspective, what did we really want to do? We wanted to positively impact people's lives. Yep. And in order to do that, I have to spend time with them, or at least that's what we felt was so important. Mm -hmm. And so 
when we made the pivot and the shift to say we are we no longer just want to offer open gym to everybody um it it kind of forced our hand a little bit to make some decisions about letting people know hey this is the the mindset going forward we don't plan to continue to have those back to rooms mm -hmm. and we recognize that that's going to be disappointing and frustrating to some but we also were committed to staying in our core focus and staying in we we lost some revenue for probably two or three months, but that allowed our our coaching staff to get really clear on what they wanted to be best at. Did they want to yeah. coach group classes? Did they want to coach one on one and personal training clients, that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. And I also think that that decision in July of of twenty nineteen allowed us to not have to stress as much on um, when when we finally had to close during COVID and then we had to kind of slowly tear our opening reopening through the pandemic to get mm -hmm. people back in the gym for group classes. It allowed our coaching staff to be, to hone their, their talents and their gifts and kind of step into their unique ability as coaches of athletes. Perfect. And I think, you know, um, as I said, people get nervous about it, but the reality is that if you actually don't let go of some of these non-ideal clients, there isn't space for more of the ideal clients that you absolutely want to work with. And so in some respects, yes, you'll go backwards for a very short period of time, but then the amount of opportunities that open up with people who you genuinely love and who you want to work with is, is just phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, I agree with that. So to me, it's a, we, we were can we were spending time talking about some of these folks in our level 10 meetings or at our quarterlies. And we were expending energy on, you know, maybe 10% of our membership that was bringing pain or frustration or negative emotion to the, to the business. Mm -hmm. And once we were able to move past that, you're absolutely right. We started to see an influx of people that were attracted to a culture that focused on coaching that focused on accountability. That was another thing that we did. We do check, we did check-ins with folks and made sure, Hey, I, I noticed you haven't been in the gym in a week. You know, how are you doing? Let's, we miss seeing you. And it wasn't because we're going to make any more money because they show up, but we know that consistency is going to lead to the results that people have said that they wanted. And yeah. you can't do that for everybody. You can, you know, our time is limited and our resources were limited mm -hmm. and you're absolutely right. Once once we saw that outflow of folks that weren't quite a fit for us and they found they landed at a place that was great for them, the universe returned that that same energy, that same vibe um, yeah. of people that we loved spending time with. Perfect. Now, you've already mentioned a couple of the EOS tools that really kind of fundamentally made a difference. I mean, one was the accountability chart and looking at, you know, what you really needed to, to grow that business mm. and, and what those roles and things were. Uh, we've talked about level 10 meetings, which is that discipline and accountability that we do every week to make sure we're on track. Was there a particular tool that had a significant impact, you know, from day one in the business? Um, in my opinion, and I would say that 95% of the clients that I work with, the very first thing that makes the biggest impact are the level 10 meetings. Yep. I spent most of my life in meetings before EOS that were unproductive. You know, we set the meeting to talk about the issue and we spend an hour or two hours talking about an issue. We don't come to a conclusion. And then we set another meeting to talk about setting a meeting to, and it's just a perpetual cycle, right? <laughs> so frustrating. Yeah. Yes. And so what the level 10 did was said for us, even from the very beginning is take, took all of those sporadic meetings that, you know, it's once a month or once every six weeks, maybe that ownership group was able to have meetings because of scheduling conflicts mm -hmm. and they were not always productive. They might last three, four or five hours, just this marathon of a meeting. And, you know, there, maybe you're not even talking about the most important things, but the power of the level 10 for us to track, start tracking actual numbers on a weekly basis on our scorecard, mm -hmm. super powerful. Being able to track priorities and say, are we still on track? Are we, are we making progress to the things that we set together and said, this is the three to seven most important priorities for the next 90 days. Mm -hmm. We could actually talk about, Hey, what are the, the member issues? What are our coaching staff issues that member or the client employee headlines driving some accountability of, 
every week we have action items that we need to get done. Are we checking those off? But really that 60 minutes in that level 10 meeting where you're spending time identifying root causes of issues, it yeah. really forces you to make the best decision for the business. Mm -hmm. So if I thought about having conversations around some of these members that mm -hmm. were, were difficult for us to kind of navigate in the gym as coaching staff and even other members, when you identify what the root cause of the dysfunction in the, in the different parts of the gym, it made it really easy for us to say, okay, we've identified the issue. Are we, do we have the courage to, to implement the solution we know is going to help solve the root cause of that, which was ultimately asking some of some members to leave. Yeah. And that's in, in every aspect of the business. You know, you, if I, if we spend the most, the majority of our time digging down and finding the root cause of that issue, it becomes really clear what you should do. Then it's just a matter of, do I have the courage and the, the gumption to actually follow through? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think, um, I, mean, I love the level 10 meeting too, and I, I agree. It's, it's actually part of the reason why I fell in love with EOS when I came across it, because I actually came across it when they launched into New Zealand using my, my um, event center. And I love the fact that in the beginning of the journey with EOS, you actually, you don't focus so much on the, the vision and the core values and all those things, which are really important, but we kind of go, well, hey, actually, if we spent a whole day working on that, you'd go back to the business and nothing would have changed, Absolutely. which means you're just going to go back to fighting fires again. So, so it's teaching the level 10 meeting, teaching the scorecard, teaching the rocks, getting some actual tools you can use immediately, um, I think is absolutely phenomenal. That's why I fell in love with it. But also with the level 10 meeting, I think that it's, it's really good when times are good, but it's also really good when times are tough because it right. actually forces you to face what is going on. You can't look at a scorecard every week that is, you know, where you're not achieving your numbers and right. pretend it's not happening because it's there it's in front of you and you have to you have to start addressing those issues and so for me throughout covid having an event center and and that and that kind of business it was like well this can't continue the way that it is so what do we need to do differently yeah i i love what i love about eos is poor performers can't hide forever yeah you will be you will be found out Mm -hmm. um, you know, as an athlete at the end of every basketball game, I would go and look at the stat sheet and I could see, okay, how many points did I have? How many rebounds did I have? More importantly, what were my turnovers? You know, how did I impact the team negatively as well? Yeah. You can't hide when you're in the locker room and everyone sees the same scorecard, you know, the, the same score sheet that you do. And that's what I love about EOS is you will not, you cannot hide forever. If you are a poor performer, if you are an energy vampire in your organization as an employee or even as an owner or a leadership team member, everyone's going to know. And yeah. the other part, part of this is I love that EOS gives you language to have conversations to either coach people up or coach them out of your organization. Yes. With core values, I can have conversations and say, Deborah, uh, you know, I'm seeing some inconsistency based off of what we said we want our culture to look like. I believe that you can live, you live up and you embody these core values, but I'm seeing some gaps mm -hmm. or with the accountability chart and gets it, wants it capacity to do it. Similar conversation. I could say, Hey, maybe this isn't quite the right fit of a role for you or a seat for you, but I think you might be really great in this other department or this other function. Because most of the time I know we are as entrepreneurs and small to medium sized business owners, we spend so much time with our people Mm -hmm. That we are emotionally invested in, you know, if 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 we've got someone who's not a right fit, part of it is, is admitting, hey, I made a hiring mistake. And so sometimes we don't want to make that decision. Or we know their families for crying out loud. Like we know yeah. these folks' families. And so it, make, it, we're like, oh, it hurts so much. And I, I'm, they avoid the tough conversation and the accountability and discipline that's really required to run a great organization. But mm -hmm. EOS gives you cover or gives you language and tools to actually have those conversations in a constructive way, yeah. not just a hammer kind of a way, super constructive way. And that, that was super powerful for us. I think it also takes the personal element out of it as well. I see that as yeah. we do have those conversations because it is about the role, because it is about what we've agreed to as a team. You can It can become very much less personal. So it's not about whether or not I like Aaron or not. It's about whether or not there is a fit there, whether or not Aaron is. Right. Um, yeah. And I and love I as an employee that it allows me to say, hey, I'm not a good fit. I, I felt <laughs> yes. uncomfortable in my situation, but it's like, hey, I'm not a good fit. And I'm, I'm willing and able to admit that using the language and the tools. 
Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Okay, so that was, um, so you left in, when was it? 2020, is that right? 2021, August of 21 is when I joined the EOS implementer community full time. Mm, okay. And I knew that I had to burn that boat and be able to, to jump all in on developing and growing my practice. Yeah. So, you know, you joined the EOS community. Um, we, we know, um, you and I know, and, and the other influencers, it's a great family with, you know, lots of like-minded people. We're all really passionate about making a huge difference in the world. And that's yeah. why we actually do what we do. And we share the same core values. So we're using all the EOS tools in our own EOS community. But why did you decide to become a full-time implementer? What was the, the motivation there for you? Whew. Yeah. Um, I've spent the majority of my life looking for opportunities to deeply impact people's lives. It's one reason why I spent time in churches and, you know, I'd grown up in a church. I spent time coaching athletes, spent time teaching at the university level, had opportunities to mentor and coach high school students at different times. Mm -hmm. And what EOS did was allow me to have a what I believe is a, a, a deep broad impact. So not just an inch deep and a mile wide, but I, I believe that I'm it's probably closer to like a half mile wide and a half mile deep. Yep. And, and then the ripple effect out of that. So when EOS implementer comes and works with a business, you're working with a leadership team and typically that's three to seven people. And you think, okay, I'm able to deeply impact three to seven people in this small group setting. Great. But then over time, as you see the ripple effects of that, the power of the leadership team all being aligned with where they want to go, all operating with discipline and accountability, growing and modeling, functioning, cohesive uh, leadership teams, and then beginning to build that culture through their business, you're impacting the lives of not just those three to seven leadership team members, but every employee that they interact with, and then the employees that they interact with. And then you go out a little bit further and you're creating um, a life that is powerful and fulfilling for those leadership team members, for every employee. And they in turn can go home and spend time with their families and in their communities and living a more joy filled, fulfilling life. So it just begins to ripple out and you start, you know, some of my clients have um, deep, uh, like a really deep seated desire to impact their communities. So they have, they give to communities. I have one client that has set up a trade school or at least a, a pipeline so that they can train the next generation of folks that are going to work skilled craftsmen as welders or things like that. And just getting to be a part at the, a part of that journey at the very beginning of that small three to seven folks. And then knowing that the ripple effect is going to be so powerful. So huge. Yeah. I, I love what I get to do. I love what I get to do. I can completely relate. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> um, so um, you're now working with business owners, obviously a whole a bunch of different business owners. Um, what? Why would they come to you? Because we we can self implement EOS, right? There's, sure. Uh, and in fact, we'd much rather people did that than did nothing at all. But what right. is the difference between self implementing and actually having somebody like yourself or myself coming into the business? That's a great question. I have, I've worked with quite a few self-implementing companies, actually. Yeah, me too. And I would say there's only one out of probably the seven or eight self-implementing clients that I've worked with. Only one has done it really well. Mm. And if you're going to do it really well, you need to have somebody who is going to be the champion of EOS in your business. They're going to act as an implementer. Their main goal and their main purpose is to make sure that the sessions flow well, that people are understanding the tools to the, to the highest ability mm -hmm. that, you know, they might as well just become an implementer. Yes. <laughs> I encourage them. If, <laughs> yeah. if you, if you love to coach teams, consider being an implementer. Yeah. Um, so the, the beauty of having an implementer in the room um, in my, in my opinion is one, they are not emotionally invested in the decisions that are made in the session room mm -hmm. to the, to the same extent that I am, if I'm the owner or I'm an employee or a leadership team member in the business, I am, I can be disconnected from it. I can be passionate about it, but I, I, it's not going to directly impact my day to day and things like that. The second thing I would say is 
we have as implementers, we have the the privilege of working with leadership teams in different industries of different personalities and different leaders. So we can see things that most of the time as a business owner, I can't see, or as a leadership team or team member, because I'm just in the weeds all the time. It's really hard for me to think about on, you know, think above my business or work on my business. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a quote that we talk, we share with our clients from Kurt Goodall. You can be, you cannot be a part of the system and understand the system at the same time. It's really difficult to self implement because I'm trying to figure out what does the system look like? And at the same time, how am I going to apply this to my business? Mm -hmm. So there's value to have somebody that does this professionally all the time to help you navigate that. So all you have to think about is, okay, I'm learning the tools, but I have some support here in learning those tools. Now, how can I apply this to my business? And it's just a little less mental energy in the room that, that gets expended. Completely agree. And I think, you know, you're, you're a coach, a basketball coach, right? So right. Um, it's, it's a similar kind of concept. If you think about every every person who plays sport, no matter what the sport, has a coach that actually helps them to grow in mm -hmm. that in their role. And yet, you know, as business owners, we've, we've sometimes never run a business before, or uh, and yet we expect that we should somehow know all this stuff, whereas a coach can actually help you to grow, help you to, to understand the, the tools, help you to see that outside perspective that you're just not you, you can't possibly do it because you're in the business and you absolutely have, you haven't got that experience yeah absolutely i grew up in the era of michael jordan being the greatest oh, of yes. all time i could yep. start a whole windstorm or firestorm of <laughs> telling all those lebron james folks that michael jordan is still the the greatest of all time we don't have to go down that road but what's fascinating to me is to see guys like michael jordan and Kobe Bryant and even LeBron, like they hire trainers outside of that. And Michael Jordan was one of the first to start that. He was mm -hmm. incredibly athletic, incredibly gifted. But in order to achieve the pinnacle of what he was trying to achieve, he knew that he needed assistance. Yeah. No matter how gifted he was, you could be the most brilliant business person in the world. You still need people around you that are going to challenge you, that are going to help you hone and grow your, your skills and your tool set and yep. to help your people in the organization, um, the, the other leaders in your organization hone their skills and talents as well. And that's the power mm -hmm. of an EOS implementer in the room. It was interesting. I was actually talking to a client yesterday who's an integrator in a family business and he's a non-family member. Um, mm. And so as the um, integrator, I asked him, I said, no, wh um, why do you feel that I can still add value? Because you are quite, um, you know, you're not the part of the family. You are a little bit external. And he said, yeah, but you've got to remember, Deborah, that, you know, I can, I can try and have some of the conversations, but I've still got to go back into work tomorrow with these people. And it can be difficult sometimes to have those things uh, without fear of some some kind of you know um, effect from that, and so, so yeah. by having our cordialism, and by you coming in, you get to ask those questions from a different outsider's perspective. And sometimes that can just you know, I could have asked the same question, but you're going to get a different result from somebody externally asking that question. Absolutely, I would also uh, that's 100 correct. Um, mm -hmm. We've had some of you, some of my favorite sessions are when I get to actually ask the question that no one else in the room had the courage to ask or, yep. or they were just terrified to ask, but everybody had the same question on their mind, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, and then the, the dam breaks open and it just all comes flooding out and you come to a resolution. It doesn't always work that way. I had a client yeah. recently that didn't, that didn't happen. Um, we broke up at the end of the day okay. <laughs> as a client yeah. Yeah. because not everybody's ready either. You know, I know that, I want to work with people that are willing to be open, open to ideas and perspectives, honest about what's actually happening in the business and vulnerable. Mm. They're not just looking to use the system to get everybody to do what they want them to do. And then they can play by their own rules. You know, every once in a while you you have a leader that's kind of like that or an owner that's a little bit like that where yeah. they just want everyone else to do what they tell them. And they get to change their mind and they get to play by their own rules. But everyone else has to follow the rules of EOS. And I'm, until I get my way, I'm just going to argue and run over you. So those aren't the those aren't my favorite clients. 
No, no, I agree. And and I mean, the, the thing you just described is, you know, we talk about entering the danger as EOS implementers. And, mm-hmm. you know, somebody actually asked me the other day, you know, do you enjoy it? And it's like, I don't think I necessarily enjoy having to bring some of that stuff to the surface. But what I know is that it's for the greater good. And right. so, you know, I don't enjoy seeing people get upset. I don't enjoy people sort of, you know, um, having very heated debates. But what I do know is that the outcome that will come from that in the long run is going to be for the greater good. And people will be just so grateful that it has happened. So, yeah, Absolutely. I don't like seeing people cry. I don't like to be upset. But at the same time, I do know that sometimes we have to do that. We actually have to have those conversations that can mm-hmm. be difficult to get past where we're at. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, we could. We, I love talking with my fellow EOS implementers. We could talk all day, and, I, and of course, we're we're all business. We're all business people too, right? So this is what right. I think I really enjoyed about the EOS community is it's not like we are theoretical academics. I mean, I ask the question of you: Why isn't traction in the universities? Because it should be a book that is taught in universities, right? And what was right. your answer? It was. It's too simple. Yeah, <laughs> and it makes too much sense. It's too logical. Like it's too easy to understand, almost. Yes. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, so we're not academic at all in terms of right. like, we, we're really pragmatic. We're really practical. We bring tools Absolutely. that can really help the business. Um, what, are, what are your favorites or tips and tools? What were the three things you'd love to share with the listeners? Man, I was giving this some thought. And yeah. so my first one would be move your body every day in some capacity. Go for a yeah. walk. Go for a bike ride. Go for a bike ride. It doesn't have to be, you know, I talked a little bit about some of our members and I, they, I got sucked in because I'm a competitive person. CrossFit will suck those competitive folks in and I could spend two, three hours working out. So, you know, and working on things and getting better, mm-hmm. but just move, move your body, go for a swim. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're in New Zealand. You have beautiful beaches there. Like go, yes. go to the beach and go swim in the ocean. Um, yeah. Go walk in the, in the clear air. So that's number one. Look, we, we walk the dogs every morning, rain, hail or shine. And sometimes you really don't it. feel like it because of the rain. It's like, oh, it's cold and it's wet. But every time you come back from it, it's like, oh, yeah, that's the best way to start the day. <laughs> yeah. We moved to, to South Dakota in October of 2021. And mm-hmm. this last winter was the most brutal winter we've had. My father-in-law is 85 and he said it's the worst winter we've had since 1969. And, you know, we had eight foot snow drifts outside of our house for four months. I mean, it was just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. And we got 18 inches of snow the Wednesday and Thursday before Easter this year, which is the middle of April. And that's a long time. Yeah. But one thing that we did, we decided that we were going to embrace the cold. And my wife and I bought snowshoes. And so we're looking, for, we're actually looking forward to this next winter because we only got to snowshoe a couple times. And then this next year, we're yep. like, Hey, we're going to spend time outside. We're just, we live here. You have to embrace some of it. Right. Yeah, so just right. move yeah. your body every day. That's, that's be tip number one. Tip number two would be read, read books, read articles, it, read things that are outside of what you typically would read fiction, read nonfiction, just read. Um, I I heard recently someone, and it's a concept that's been around, but this idea of something like a stupid tax or stupidity tax or something, (laughs) people have lived and and made the mistakes that we can avoid if we just read about them and learn about them. So read so that you can avoid a lot of the mistakes that other people have made. And I, and I think if, yeah, if, I if you don't enjoy reading, you know, there's so many different options now with Audible sure. and, and the various bits and pieces, podcasts. So there's, right. there's many, many different ways to Absolutely. Kind of feed your mind. Yep. Feed your mind. And be careful mm-hmm. about what, don't just take everything, you know, be, yeah. be discerning as you're reading and listening. But for sure, feed your mind. So I guess that's probably the better way to say it is feed your mind uh, mm-hmm. the same way that you would feed your, your body. Don't just feed it junk food, which to me would be majority of social media and let's be honest i'm on social media so i I can't just like blanket (laughs) (laughs) say that that's terrible or you know entertain like entertaining types of things but just look for opportunities that you could be discerning mix in some fruits and veggies in your in your mind food (laughs) and then the third the third one is practice gratitude Mm -hmm. practice gratitude um negative emotions cannot coexist with gratitude so I had a really rough session in the last two weeks. You know, I just came off of seven sessions in 11 days. In one of those, it was a, I'd broken up with the client at the end of the day. I was super, like, I could feel my cortisol levels were high and things like that. So I did some breath work. 
And then I just started to, in my mind, make a list of things that I'm grateful for. And the negativity, the anger or the frustration or the sadness or the fear or all those negative emotions can't coexist if, I, if I'm in a state of gratitude. So I just kept listing things. What am I grateful for? And then the, it, they would try to creep back in and it would push the gratitude out. And I'd say, no, I'm, gonna, I'm being grateful right now. I'm thinking, what, are, what am I thankful for? And just from the big things to the small things, I'm thankful that the sky is blue today. I'm thankful that I have a house that has air conditioning when the temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Like, mm. I'm thankful for my son. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my dog that I haven't seen in two weeks. You know, just being thankful for the physical things, for the intangible things, all of those things. Neg negative emotions can't coexist um, when I'm in a state of gratitude. So mm -hmm. look for, like, seek out things that I can be grateful for. And I'll give you a bonus one. I'll, I'll go ahead. Go. Yeah. Uh, my bonus one is this. Um, I was in the Denver airport, international airport, traveling through one time. And there was this stand, like one of those pop-up shops. And it's yeah. a, a t-shirt that says, be good to people. And that's my, that's my fourth one. Be good to people. Right. Yeah. We, we typically know what that means. Just be good mm -hmm. to people. Yeah. That's not a political yeah. statement. It's nothing like that. It's just... <laughs> Deborah's a human. She's people. I'm going to be good to Deborah. I'm people. Deborah's going to be good to me. Let's just go around and, and be good to people. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Okay. So, um, as I said, we're, we're probably going to call it uh, the, to the end now. But before yeah. we do that, tell me a little bit about, you know, what is your ideal client? I mean, you've mentioned a little bit before, they obviously need to be open, honest, vulnerable. Um, but is there a particular type of client, is the typical type of industry that you like to work with? Tell me a bit about That's who that ideal question. client is. Yeah. So EOS, in my opinion, is industry agnostic. Mm -hmm. But what it what you do, the requirement that you do have is a certain type of mindset. So I have clients that are across industries, manufacturing, creative shops, you know, art, very artsy. Um, I've got some real estate clients. I've got just all sorts of things. So yeah. and that was kind of my experience as an auditor when I was working for this public accounting firm is I got to go into all these little, like these weird businesses you know, I'm counting plastic bottles on pallets that were being manufactured or I'm at a eyeglasses store counting frames and then an inventory observation, real estate, all sorts of things. So I, I would say that what's most important to me are the mindsets and the willingness of the leaders to embrace the tools of EOS as close yeah. to pure as possible. They aren't going to try to layer on other tools or other other operating systems. And most importantly, are they willing to be open to each other, be honest with each other and themselves, be vulnerable with themselves and, you know, about what's actually happening in the business? And um, I don't like to work with assholes. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what yeah. I tell them. Like, that's, yeah. If we're going to be cut right to the chase, it really gets yeah. down to... I don't want to work with assholes. <laughs> so that's great. So if somebody does want to get in contact with you, what's the best way to get hold of you? Oh, fantastic question. I would say first would be my email address is aaron.perkypile at EOS Worldwide. Um, that would be. I actually think you one. may have one of the longer. E I've got probably the longest email ever. I think with the EOS Worldwide.com, <laughs> but I think you're up there as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm up there. My last name's ten letters. I'm fortunate yeah. that my parents didn't give me a real long first name. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, okay, that would be number Aaron one. Perky Pile, yep. Yep. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram um, at perkypile.eos. I post mm -hmm. content there about EOS and life and business. Um, those are probably the, the two easiest ways. Or LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn. Yep. Perfect. Hey, look, thank you so, so much for your precious time. Uh, thank really you. enjoyed chatting with you, really enjoyed sort of sharing stories and things. Um, I look forward to seeing, you know, all the, the future successes that you have. And I look forward to seeing you when I come over to the US next time. Yeah, absolutely, Deborah. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Thanks for listening to the podcast show, Better Business, Better Life. My name is Deborah Chantry Taylor. I'm an EOS implementer, family business advisor, business and leadership coach, podcaster, and speaker. However, I'm also a business owner with several current business interests. I'm fortunate to have lived the high life with all the lifestyle, the toys, you name it, and then I've lost it all, not only once but twice in two spectacular train wrecks. I know what it's like to experience the highs and lows.
I came across EOS when they launched into New Zealand using my Entrepreneurs Playground and Event Centre in Parnell, Auckland. I love the simplicity of the tools and their philosophies fitted my personal brand statement perfectly. The brilliance is in the simplicity. I've always been passionate about seeing entrepreneurs lead a life they love, and now I help them live that EOS life. Doing what they love, with people they love, making a huge difference in the world, being compensated appropriately, and with time to pursue other passions. If you want more information or want to get in contact about using EOS in your business, you can visit my website at debra.coach. That's www.debra.coach. Thanks for listening.